Hi guys, welcome to the video. I've been using Mac 3 for quite a number of years on my CNC machines, my aux router and my hot wire CNC machines. And one of the questions I get quite often on my website is, can I use Linux, Linux CNC? And the short answer is yes, you can. I actually think Linux CNC, after using Mac 3 for quite a few years, is a little bit easier, especially if you're first getting started. Mac 3 can be a little bit overwhelming when you first open it up and you look at the screens. Oh, did I mention Linux CNC is free, being open source? Mac 3 is $175, so that adds a fair amount to your build. Um, and this first video is going to be with the Ox router, and I'll follow that up with another video on the uh, Hotwire CNC machine. I had intended to do the Hotwire CNC machine first. It's installed in my shed outside and as you can see the weather in the UK has been a bit too severe of late to go out and do any filming. I'll take you through all the steps from downloading the software, installing it, configuring it and then we'll actually make a tricopter frame just like this one here. So for the actual CNC machine you've got a couple of choices. The one I chose was this one from Oosnest which is a, an updated version of the Open Builds Ox router. They've added a couple of improvements to improve rigidity by some extra plates on the x-axis there and some extra bearings on the z-axis. Mine's the 750 by 500 and I think when I purchased it a couple of years ago it was 570 pounds which isn't cheap but it's it's a superb kit very well packaged and the manual's brilliant. Uh, I'm not getting any sponsorship for any of this at all so you know it's just my own opinion. <laughs> Another option is to purchase a, a complete machine off of uh, eBay or Amazon. And there's quite a lot of these and I think the most common size people tend to go for is the 600 by 400 and they vary in price. So I'll put some links in the, uh, in the description so you can check them out. A third option is to build your own using a MDF or particle board. And quite a few people uh, built them like this. And, what they tend to use is roller skate bearings to provide the linear motion on uh, aluminium uh, angle. And there's been some quite big machines built with this and quite a popular site known for do, doing this is a build your own CNC. And they build some really big machines with this. So, you know, if you want to go down that route, I did consider this myself at the time. Uh, but in the end, I went for the user nest and I haven't regretted it, but it's still a good option, this one. To use Linux CNC, you're going to need a, a desktop machine, and the one I have is a, an old Dell GXX 620U SSF. It stands for Ultra Small Form Factor, and I've got a, a few of these, and they're absolutely ideal for CNC because you don't need very much power for Mac 3 or Linux CNC. Uh, but what you do need is a parallel port. There's two options for the parallel port: either get a machine where it's already fitted in which is probably going to be an older machine but still quite suitable for Linux CNC or you can get a, a, an add-on card which goes inside the machine but you need to make sure you get the correct one because there are some 3.3 volt ones which don't work very well so I'll put a link up to the 5 volt cards my machine is a, a Pentium 4 it's got an 80 gig hard disk and it's uh, 2 gigabytes of RAM in it and it works absolutely fine with Linux CNC and Mac 3. I tend to use mainly Linux C CNC now, but so that I can swap backwards and forwards between Mac 3 and Linux CNC, I'll use a, a separate uh, hard drive, as you can see here. And on this Dell machine, I can swap the hard drive over in about 30 seconds. So I'll have one hard drive for Linux CNC and one for Mac 3. So I'll just show you the process of how easy it is to swap it over and then we'll get on with the install. So as you can see the machine is very uh, slim and compact and what I like about it is the whole thing is on this carriage and it doesn't take a lot of room up. Um, and it's very easy to change discs. So what we'll do is we'll swap, turn around Take the lid off and to swap the disc over it's just a matter of pulling 
that out. Here's the little CNC disc. Um, what we'll do is we'll go through the install procedure. It has got a copy of the little CNC on it at the moment, but we'll we'll redo it. So it's quite a simple job to fit it in. I think this is a much safer option than uh, if you've only got one machine and you think they're partitioning the hard disk, it can get a little bit um, complicated sometimes partitioning disks and you do run the risk of destroying your drives. So this is a controller, it's one of the Chinese uh, all-in-one controllers, so it's a TB6560 and I'll put some links in the description if you, if you want to go to one of these. They're quite affordable and I've never had any bother with this one at all. Uh, you can see I've nicknamed it El Gizmo. I've also got a, a spindle relay on there. So what that does is it automatically switches the router on. I was finding sometimes I was setting a G-code going and uh, <laughs> I forgot to switch the router on. So what I do is I look around and, uh, and purchase this spindle relay and uh, it's controlled by the controller and as soon as it gets the right code come through uh, it switches the router on automatically which is very handy so as you can see the requirements for Linux CNC are pro quite small um, I'd go for a little bit better than this and my machine exceeds this anyway it'd probably work with this but quite slowly um, so what we need to do now is download the ISO from linuxcnc.org and save that onto your uh, desktop somewhere uh, you can do this on a, a Windows or a uh, Mac machine or even a Linux machine and then best thing to do then is go to this site called pendrivelinux.com and download this uh, installer so I'm doing the Windows version here and what this will do this will burn the uh, ISO onto a USB thumb drive and it's, it's quite easy to install um, I've installed it on my Windows machine and it's uh, it seems okay there's a, you know I've checked it with antivirus and malware and so basically all we do is we go down and select unlisted ISO grub and then browse for the ISO and then just select your, your thumb drive there it, it hung a little bit here because I'd only just plugged the thumb drive and it took a, a few seconds just to recognize it but once it gets it we just burn the ISO and it does take probably 10-15 minutes so it might be a good time to go and make a cup of tea or a cup of coffee so I'll just fast forward this once we get through so it just gives you confirmation there and we just say yes and just say yes to that and off it goes and it creates the ISO you, you can do you can burn a DVD if you want to um, I'll put that in your machine but um, I did try that on mine and it took forever so it's, it's much much better to do it with this USB you might have to go into the BIOS your machine and just enable USB boot uh, most machines in the last sort of seven or eight years or even a bit older than that will boot from USB <laughs> so plug the USB drive in and then we're ready to do the first step which is the latency test so get ready on the F12 key on the Dell machine to go into the boot menu I think that's on most machines as well. There we are. So we've got we've got the, the uh, boot set up there. So if we go to your speed device, press enter. Battery's a bit low on this machine. I need to replace it. The first thing we want to do 
I've seen a few videos um, that people have done on installing Linux C, Linux CNC, and um, I'm not knocking them, but some of them go into too much detail. I think some miss some important steps uh, out. I think the most important step you need to do is the first one. Just boot it to live. Because what we need to do is we need to do a latency test. And the reason we need to do that is when we go into the configuration, we need to put in a, a figure for the latency. And the reason for that is that Linux CNC is a real-time operating system. And basically what that means, um, and I might have oversimplified it a little bit, it, it's a guaranteed time that the system will respond to an instruction without being interrupted. Um, so in CNC terms, what that really means is that the machine isn't going to be interrupted while it's on some critical instruction, which could, if you're running a CNC job, could mean that if it is interrupted, it could be in the middle of a toolpath and just cause it to, you know, cause an error and cause you to ruin the job. So what we need to do is do this latency test first, get the figure from it, and then see what happens. There we go, so we've got Linux CNC up now. So first thing we need to do is run this latency test. One thing I advise as well, you don't have it connected to the internet. Uh, I don't have any of my CNC machines connected to the internet. Because they just, for me they're just CNC machines. And I get all my G code and that on via uh, little thumb drives. The reason I don't recommend it is because when I have done this latency test, when it is connected to the internet, it can take um, a lot of resources and cause the machine not to run particularly well. So let's do the latency test and I'll so go to CNC, CNC latency test. And you can see there what it's doing. it's running this thing called max jitter so what we're looking for is this number at the bottom here base thread see at the moment it's showing 21,240 and that's uh, I'm pretty certain it's nanoseconds now they reckon Linux CNC will run on a machine okay up to uh, 50,000 uh, 50, it probably won't run very fast but it will run so the lower you can get it the better but what we need to do is put a little bit of stress under the machine and the best way I found to do that there's a program that comes pre-installed called GL GLX Gears so if we just run that up we need to open the terminal for that so if we go to terminal and then just type GLX Gears Ooh. keyboard's going a bit crazy GL so we get this I think it's actually used for testing video cards out but it works quite well on this and you can, you can see the numbers jumping a bit so we'll just uh, minimise that and what we need to do is stress the machine the other thing that's quite good to stress the machine which comes pre-installed on it since is uh, GIMP the uh, image manipulation program so if we run that up as well and that takes a little while to come up the idea is to put the machine under the most stress it's likely to get, get under and then see what the figure is going to be so if we just switch back to the latency test up at the top there you can see that's really jumped up now uh, to 45 so we probably will be okay with this machine um, and generally I reckon it's a good idea to leave it running a good 15 uh, 15 minutes at least or even a couple of hours uh, I've already done this um, on my uh, testing 
Um, um, and my figure does come out a little bit lower than that. So what we need to do is note this maximum jitter figure down because we'll need that when we go into the step configuration wizard to set the machine up. <coughs> right, so what we'll do now, close everything down. We'll just restart it. Wants me to remove the USB, but we're going to use it again anyway. Oh, missed it. Did I get it? Yeah. So we boot from USB. Still recording, yep. Now this time we do install graphical. And this is a lot quicker doing it with USB. Still takes a little bit of time, probably 15 20 minutes at the most, but right, so we just select English. Okay, so I'm going to United Kingdom, uh, British English, I think. And it thinks it's a CD drive, so it says it's still on. And when you do this a DVD drive, yeah, you need to go and make a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'll fast forward this now as I said I don't recommend using uh, a network card so I leave that as no Ethernet card even though there's one in the machine and we just say continue to that it's where we name a machine what you like, keyboard really. went a bit squirrely here so all I did really I called it Linux CNC and then just entered the, the username as RC Keith This is where some guys, the videos I've seen, make it a little bit complicated. They go for the manual option there, and, and really, to, you know, to be honest, there's no need for it. Um, this is a standard Debian install, so it's designed to be run lots of different pieces of software. But the only one I ever use is guided using the entire disk. <coughs> And that's the simplest. And it's seen the disk there, so it's an 80 gig. So we just do continue. And it's doing all the petition itself, and we just say continue. And then we'll just get a are you sure? Uh, because this will overwrite the disk if there's anything on there. So we say yes. Through the magic of the video, I'll pause this part. So I've rebooted. 
him now. <clears throat> and now we should just boot straight from the hard disk now. So once she's booted up, which doesn't take too long, we just need to log in with the username that you've created. And then we go to the Linux CNC menu and then go to Step Config Wizard. And this is the first time we just go to Start and then we're just going to create a new configuration. Now we can name the machine and that again can be whatever you want. So I just call mine the uh, Ox Router. I leave it at XYZ and then change it to other inches or millimeters if you prefer. Then down the bottom there, that's where we put the latency figure in. And the figure I got through my longer testing was this figure here, 38630. Then we go forward and this is where we set our parallel port up. On the uh, output pinout presets down there where it says shear line, there is an option for the TB6560, but it didn't um, work on mine. The, the, the pinouts were different, so I just went through and set it all up. Uh, as you can see here, and I've got a post on the website with all these settings, so you know if you want to check on the website, I'll have the... Uh, screenshots of all these so you can just you don't have to worry about trying to copy these down or stop in the video one of the things we have to do though on the ox router on the y axis there's two steppers and so to get them to work correctly we have to set two of the pins to the same and so you can see pin seven and pin eight there we've got set to y direction but pin eight we have to invert invert it so that it goes the correct direction and on pin 9 and 14 we have them both as Y step uh, took me a little while to figure this out after some googling but I got I got there in the end and it did seem to work okay uh, the amplifier enable is just enabling the uh, steppers and I think I forgot to yeah invert the Z uh, so on the inputs I've got home and limits on my machine, so I've set that to all home and limits. And then I've got an e stop as well. And that has to be inverted. If you've got a, a, an add in card, you may need to alter the address here. By default, normally it will pick it up, um, but you can go through, look through the, the, the D message command to see what the parallel ports are. Uh, we can set these on here for later, but we don't really need them now. And this is where we configure the axis. Uh, and these are the settings that I've tested and work on the, the Ox router. Um, I've got a bit of a typo there, that should be 60, not 560. <laughs> I actually did this section on a virtual machine, so it was much easier to see rather than trying to film the screen. And the settings at the bottom of there are for the homing and limits. And that took a little bit of sorting out as well. Uh, we, can go and can, we can go and test the axis, but I'll show you this on the, uh, the next stage. Because you can't really do this on a virtual machine. <laughs> and then we put the size of the our table in. So my OX router is uh, 350 by 550, I think. <laughs> Uh, the y-axis, I get the settings right on this one. <laughs> so that's 60. And then the velocity is the same as the dx, 10.5, and the acceleration. You can buy about with these and tune them as, as well uh, it, when you're doing the test axis, which I'll show later. And then we go forward 
uh, onto the z-axis and this is a little bit different because this is using a lead screw rather than the belts that the the ox router uses so these are the settings i found work work with that uh, okay And then the, the travel on mine isn't very, very much. It, it really all depends what tool you've got in as well as how much travel you've got, but uh, that's a safe enough figure. You can come back into this afterwards and tune all these settings. So we go forward. So when we click forward, we go onto the final screen, click done, and it will create the icons on the desktop, which we can launch our machine with. So we'll go on to the live machine now to do the axis test. Right, so back on the real machine now. And as you can see on the screen now, we've got a couple of extra icons and we've got the launch program. So we'll just go back into the step config wizard off the main menu. So we just go forward and then modify an existing configuration. And then we select our configuration And we're going into test the accesses now, so we'll just go forward. Get you zoomed in a bit better here so you can see it. Back a bit too much. That's better. Right, so we'll go forward. We've done all that, so we can leave that the same. Leave that the same. And now we're going to go into test the axis on that test axis button. So once we press the test axis button, you can hear the steppers being enabled. So all we need to do here is use the arrow keys there and move them backwards and forwards and see how the, the actual axis is moving. And what we want is no missteps you'll you'll hit, hear it straight away if this misstep because it will just sound odd um, so this is looking quite good here what you can do you can go to this one option and set distance and it will go backwards and forwards and that should give you a good indication if there's any uh, missteps and you can also use this to tune your velocity and speed so you can try different settings and see how it affects it. So that's the x-axis uh, checked. Move on to the Y. We can't do the Y because it's only actually programmed to move one of the steppers because we've got two steppers on the y-axis then that will cause the uh, gantry to rack uh, no we don't want that um, what I did initially to test this out was to loosen off the uh, screws that hold the belts and then check that the motors uh, are running in the correct direction and because it's using the same pinion as belt as the X and the settings are the same. Now the z-axis or the z if you're in the US uh, we can check that one as well take the um, distance down there because there isn't a great deal of travel on my Z axis. Take that down to five. I'll just move it down a bit more. Go 
forward. I wonder what it will do, it will update the configuration, or if it's the first time in it, it will create the uh, launch program and the directory where all the settings are. You can go in and do this manually, and some of the more experienced guys in CNC do go into the actual uh, configuration files and amend them manually. Um, but I think if you're just starting off um, and you're fairly new to this, uh, this, this is the best option for beginners. So if we now run the configuration launcher, to actually operate the machine. We've got the stop switch there, the big red X, and then we've got the power switch there. And as that goes on, you can hear all the steppers uh, enabled. So we can actually test the machine uh, just using the keyboard. Now that we've got it set up. I do this on the keyboard with the arrow keys. And there's the Z axis. This page up and page down. On my machine, I've actually got home and your limit switches. Uh, if I set this up, you don't really have to have these. Some people don't bother. I had them so I wired them in. All my wiring goes back through the uh, RJ45 LAN cables which you can see on the side there. And the, that makes it very modular and I can take the controller to my hot wire CNC machine, plug it in, load up a different config and then I'm doing hot wire CNC. Yeah. So I'll just demonstrate the Open the loops. This took me some figuring out. Um, I couldn't get it to work, it was going the wrong way, and, and eventually, after some Googling, uh, I, I found what the uh, options were. But to home it, there's the home all button there. And once we do that, um, all my switches are wired in series, so what it will do is it will home each axis individually. Now. And it's coming across to the X. You see it just goes on and comes back. And if you see on the screen there, it's all been zeroed out. Right, so let's actually go and make something now then. So here on the router I've got some 3mm light ply which I've clamped down with these clamps and as you can see on the router I've inserted all these uh, screwing sets in the actual uh, spoil board so it makes it real easy to just clamp stuff down. I've got a slightly short screw there so I had to go back for another one. The thing we need to do is get the G code on, and I just use a little USB thumb drive. So I'll plug that in and load it in. So there's a drive there. It's that one there, top frame. We'll just drag that to the desktop. I've already done this one, so I'll just replace it. Right, power the machine on.
just full screen it. And then we'll load in the code. Let's go back up the desktop. There it is there, top frame. So now we have the frame there. So next thing we need to do is home the uh, router. And we go to the home all button. That's home in the Z axis first. axis now and then the y axis and what I do then is then move it to where I want to on the workpiece so I will go So all I'm doing here is getting the cutter to touch the spoil board by using the page up and page down keys. So it just touches and then we enter minus three in for the touch off setting. <coughs> 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 Z and we do touch off. Now doing it this way it's that should be minus three millimeter down because it's a three millimeter piece of ply. So I do minus three. Press enter. And then if we go back up. Now we can move the X and Y to where we want it to on the on a piece of stock. So just getting the bit where I want it to on the workpiece. Had a few goes at this because I wasn't happy the first time, so I've just speeded it up so you don't have to watch me moving the thing around. Select the Y, you touch off zero. Select the X and do touch off zero. So we should be ready to start now. And the actual, this actual code was generated from Fusion 360. Um, if there's enough interest, I'll do another video on how I actually uh, got this code out of Fusion 360. Uh, Fusion 360 is really powerful, but um, it, it is a bit of a steep learning curve, but it's, it's well worth the effort. So what will happen now is the I've got a solid state relay on my router, so as soon as I start to run the code, it should start the router up, and then it should, uh, I think on this one it does the holes first, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll set it off, fingers crossed, and see what happens.
plate you see there was the first real test I did with uh, the CNC. And, uh, I'd actually cut this out with Mac 3 as well. Um, so it did, did absolutely fine. Um, speed was about the same. So here's most of the parts for the tricopter. I've actually got three frames here, but I only need two, but I'm sure I'll manage to break one at some time. So it's always good to have a spare. As you can see, the tail rotor itself has been 3D printed. So when I do a video on this, I'll go into a lot more detail of how all this was made and where I got the actual design from. If you check the description, I'll include a link to where you can get the G-code for the top and bottom frames of this tricopter if you want to have a go at doing this yourself. So as long as you use a, a 3mm bit, then it should uh, work on most CNC machines. So if you made it this far into the video guys, thanks very much for watching, really do appreciate it. And I've got several videos planned for uh, this year. The next one will probably be the Hotwire CNC machine using Linux CNC and some free software to actually generate the uh, foam cores. So that will be a very low cost option if you're interested in that. And then there will be the tricopter build. If there's enough interest, then let me know in the comments. I'll show how I use Fusion 360 to generate the G-code to build the tricopter frame in this video. And the technique there is a technique you can use just about on anything really you know, with this type of machine. So thanks for watching guys and catch you later.